and simulcast at the same time. For, you, for those of you that are not familiar with simulcast, the simulcast is it basically enables two transmitters to transmit at the same time. Traditionally, with non-simulcast systems, you're limited to one transmitter, and that one transmitter gives you coverage that it gives you. Um, and then you have uh, you can have multiple receiver sites to improve talk back coverage, and that's called voting system. But traditionally, you only have one transmitter, one talk out uh, site, and that was a limitation. Uh, when we run a propagation study for City of Waltham, if we run Prospect Hill, Prospect Hill covers pretty decently a good good part of the town. But there's areas in the town that there is just not a good amount, not sufficient talk out coverage. And so by adding simulcast site or another transmitter site in Northeast School that covers that part of town that otherwise would have insufficient coverage. So, you know, when uh, the city of Waltham, when, when we looked at, you know, basically uh, the options for the new system, you want to be, you want to have P25 digital capability to be compliant with, with future requirements and for police department primarily to have the features of P25 such as encryption. Um, as well as to get improved audio quality and other benefits of P25, but you also need to have analog for interoperability with current systems and other towns that don't have P25 compliant radios. And so that's why we have a dual mode simulcast system at this point. Um, so that's one thing that is unique about this system that um, is a dual mode, dual mode simulcast. Uh, system consists of the six sites. There is a prime, there is a one transmitter site, which is basically not just a transmitter, it's a main repeater site, Prospect Hill. We have a second repeater site at Northeast School. So those these are main sites that contain transmitters as well as receivers. Um, those two combiner sets, they go, one goes for each site, that those are antenna combiners that combine multiple antennas into I mean multiple transmitters into only two antennas. And they're expandable, so we can add additional channels down the road if other town departments want to go on onto the same system. Um, and uh, receiver sites; those are two receiver sites over there. The one goes to uh, one goes to um, uh, Bentley, and the other one is uh, Winter Street. And then we have the outdoor enclosure for Brandeis, which is basically uh, going at the bottom of the water tank. And so. Looking at the typical receiver site, I'm going to start with that because it's simple. Um, you have a receiver chassis. This basically contains four receivers inside just one single chassis. It's expandable. Uh, you can add two more receivers. There are three IDUs. Basically, these are for microwave radios, microwave links. So you can see that there's a microwave to Winter Street, to Prospect Hill, to Bentley. If you notice, each one of these sites has multiple, multiple links to other sites for redundancy. So, you know, this has three three links to other sites. And if you combine all these micro links together, you come up with a fully redundant mesh network. And so, even, you know, multiple micro microwave links can go down, still it will not affect the system. System will continue running unaffected. Um, so, we have the four receivers. Uh, these are tape. Uh, the system is based, in, uh, it is based around Tate TV9100 uh, base stations, which I believe are by far the most advanced base stations, the repeaters in the market today. Um, and then we have a uh, we have a networking devices, and if you notice, you know the main sites we have multiple. Again, no single point of failure. In case one of the switches fails, it's not going to take the entire site down. It's going to take you know some devices. The, the remaining of the, the, the equipment, remaining of the channels will continue operating. Um, power supplies, uh, these are redundant power supplies, so which basically means every, each one of them has multiple power supplies built in. So, um, like in this case, we have two power supplies in this one. If one fails, the other one continues running. There's extended battery backup on each site. There's, uh, they're designed for approximately 48 hour battery backup. Um, this one is is actually not plugged in, it's been unplugged for uh, since yesterday. Um, and uh, so, you know, that's that's the receiver site. Other uh, receiver sites are pretty much, they're all typical, typical the same. Now, the main sites, uh, Prospect Hill, for example, uh, these are repeaters. There's four channels, there are four repeaters. These are 100 watt repeaters. They are, uh, and uh, they're not just repeaters, they're also voters. Typically, in the traditional systems, you have a voter, which is a device that takes transmissions from all the from all the different receivers, votes the best signal, and sends it to the transmitter. That's a single point of failure because if that voter goes down, 
you lose console connectivity to the system, you lose connectivity to the transmitter, and all the receivers are down. So that is a single point of failure. With this system, it's all IP based, which means there's no, there's really no voter at all. There is no voter as a separate device. Voting is carried on in um, voting is carried on inside a inside the each each repeater. So if you have a, um, for example, if you have a failure like this repeater is voting on FT2 channel. If this repeater goes down, voting function is going to be carried over to the other side automatically. So, quick question, like uh, you talk, Rob was mentioning you've got uh, space restrictions, and 